Aloha aina, aloha la kuokoa, aloha mai kako. O vaono kuule lani reyes, noho au ikuolo e kuumbau pokii, elua ukai kamahine, o keolo oli kuuhi apo, ai o kalaliloa ku pokii. He kahu puke vau no ke kula ki iki o kamehameha, hana vau i loko oka, hale vai hona puke o eho i o Midkiff Learning Center. Aloha everybody. Mahalo so much for coming in. I'm so glad that you folks are curious about La Kuokoa. My name is Dr. Kuule Lani Reyes and I reside on the island of Oahu. I'm over in Kualoa. Think of Chinaman's Hat, just right down the road from that area. I live there with my two daughters, Kaliloa and Kiolo Oli. Both of them are fierce manawahine. My oldest is an 18-year-old graduated from Kekula or Samuel Manao Kalani Kamakao School over in Kaneohe, and my youngest one is 13 years old there, a seventh grader there. And I bring this up because many of us commit to La Kuokoa because it's not just about us in our present time, but it's also for the future. So that's what we always keep in mind when we do Hawaiian activities. We want to be good ancestors because we are going to be kupunas, not necessarily in this temporary world, but also in the other world. So we're creating a really great workplace, a better world for our people, as well as creating resources for the future generation. So I'm gonna holo mua. Okay, so this is our Papa Kuhi. I went over introduction just a bit, and then I'm gonna go into the context as far as what is Lakuokoa, and how does this relate with Kamehameha schools? How do we interact with Laku Okoa? I'm also going to share a bit about Midkiff Learning Center, my place of work. Right now, this is my office here. And I'm going to share about the Laku Okoa activities. We've been celebrating this for three years. And it started off really small, and it grew, and it grew. And we're always debriefing, analyzing, and we're always trying to get better because this is beyond us. Laku Okoa is for the Lahui. Our job here, our mission here at Kamehameha Schools is to uplift the Lahui. And the Lahui is our people, our community, not just here at the school, but as well as outside the school community, out, outside in the rest of the islands. And I'm gonna share with you some of the logistics we went over and lots of lessons learned, planning lessons. So even if you don't know what Laku Okoa is, or if you're not a school librarian, I'm sure you can take away some valuable information and lessons from this and then apply it for whatever program or activity you wanna engage in. So how do we celebrate Laku Okoa, Laku Okoa today? So this is a picture that I took just this past Tuesday morning. November 28th at 7.40 a.m. I admit I was a little late, so I wasn't in the lineup dancing. So my colleagues are in the back. You can see one very, actually a couple of them clearly in the red shirt. So for protocols, for we Native Hawaiians, we start with our oli at prayers. We opened up with naaumakua, eho mai, and then we dance aua ia. Now what's significant about this is it wasn't just as simple as doing it. Kamehameha Schools is still struggling with its colonial assimilation foundation. And so oftentimes I refer to Kamehameha Schools as a neo-colonial institution. And we're still struggling with our identity as Native Hawaiians, but also as Native Hawaiians today. What does that mean? An example of this is that very morning, just this past Tuesday, when I went up to my office, I checked my work email, and I saw my supervisor sent out an email to all of us in Midkiff saying, hey, the administration got a complaint. Brace yourselves. Got a complaint from a parent group saying they don't want their children participating in this event because it's not a Christian event. And so... As a concession, the exact words that was in the email from the administrators is, as a concession, us teachers will not encourage students to participate in our protocol. So we're not there to say, hey, jump in, jump in the lineup, hey, come come, Oli with us, stuff that we do normally do. And so this was very shocking and surprising for me because I thought, I thought we over this. I, I thought we've we've let go our 
Christian past, Christian, um, how should I say? Anyway, barriers, if you will. I thought, hey, this is 2023, not 1823, which was the heyday of the missionary times here in the islands. Not 1923 when we were a territory of this, you know, of of the United States. It's 2023, and Kamehameha Schools is a private school. So I thought naively, what's been going on, on the continent across the United States? That's over there. I thought we have an ocean that separates us, you know, 2,500 miles away. So what's going on with the whole book banning nonsense? Censorship was over there, but I was wrong. However, my colleagues went and they did the protocols anyway. And I thought that was so awesome for them. I have way more respect for them because they didn't back down. I mean, it wasn't um like they were told not to do it, but there was kind of like that uncomfortableness, awkwardness about it. But we did it anyway. I'm so proud of them. And so, like I said, I was late. So I, I took pictures, but I'm so happy they did it. They're so amazing. And so if you're wondering, what is La Kuokoa? Well, if you haven't heard, this is our Independence Day. The Hawaiian Kingdom announced La Kuokoa back in November 28, 1843. And I got to admit, the first time I heard about this is in 2021. And I'm a graduate of the Kamehameha Schools. And I'm also a social studies teacher. Oh, I, I'm a seasoned social studies teacher. I taught history. I was a history minor. I never heard about this event until 2021. And I'm really embarrassed about that. So Lakuokoa, think of this as a, an event that we brought up. A lot of folks went and they researched at primary sources. They went into a new pepper and they brought it out. And so we re-celebrating this. We're giving it new life. And so we had to search and realize and learn what is Lakuokoa. So what it is, is formal recognition of Hawaii's independence. It's from treaties that were signed by Great Britain, France, and then later the United States. I'm going to share this video that students created a few years ago back at Kamehameha Schools. So when we first created our Lakuo activities, we knew as librarians that we need to work with our teachers to work with our students. We knew we had to form these partnerships. And we're so happy and lucky that we have some solid teacher friends. We've cultivated Pilina relationships with them. So, for example, these are Hawaiian language students that Kumu Mapuana Koboshigawa uh, worked with. And I'm going to play the video because I'm going to let you, let these young men tell you what La Kuokoa is. Aloha mai kako o pono keia me ko upakana o ke anu. E ia maua ke wala au nei e pili ana i ka lāku o koa o Hawaii. He a ia me o ka lāku o koa e ke anu. E ia kā, o hoa komo ia ka lāku o koa ma ka lā iwa kā lua komo walu o nove mapa i ka maki ki umi komo walu kana hā komo kolu. Ma ke lā manawa, nā ene lani, palani, a me ke kahi mau au puni ea e i ke ea Hawaii nei ma ke lā manawa. Ai, no elima mahina na haku palet i lawe aku i ke ea Hawaii. A kā, ma ka hopena o ua mau mahina, ua haavi hoa ake malala tāmes i ka hai Hawaii, ko kā ko ea. Ma i ke ea hanana, ua ike o kau i ke auli, i ke koi koi o ka hooku o koa hoana i ke au puni. I ole e hoa kā huli ia ka lā hui e ke kahi au puni ea e. Oia no. No laila, he mea hoa hau oli i ke ea no ka lā hui. O hoa mana au kā ko. E maa o nga na ka o pui ka pele hu, a e piha na ka na o i keia ike o kou kākou kupuna. Mahalo na ko o kou ho o lohe ana mai. A hui ho! There we go. So that is our students explaining it. As school librarians, and really, school librarians are teachers. We really are teachers that have spent many, many years in the classroom, and we know it is our job to provide engaging, meaningful, and relevant activities and learning experiences. And so this is one example that we do. We work with our students, we share our resources, and we guide them to create videos, to create the public service announcements and posters and anything and Instagram stuff now. You know, I'm learning new stuff. Instagram, because that's what the cool kids are using now. So we like, okay, we work with them, we give them some parameters, 
These are what we want to communicate and they run with it. So super cool. I got to share. Oh, color mine, color mine. Okay. So now on to the next slide. So I want to give some context to the schools. Bernice Powahi Bishop is the great granddaughter of Kamehameha I. That's why this school is named Kamehameha Schools. And so she had the wisdom and the foresight to write in her will to dedicate her assets to supporting Native Hawaiians. And so she set aside her assets, her money, her property. Basically, she had a lot of property, not so much money, but back then a lot more property than, than today. And so she felt the best way to serve her people is to set aside and support the education of her people. And so it is inside her will, Article 13, that we always take a look at and we always consider to remind us as teachers and kumu, what is our mission here? And her will says to uplift the, the Lahui. And two schools were set apart, was set or created, one for boys and one for girls. The boys school was set up in 1887. A few years later, seven years later, it was set up in 1894. So the boys' school originally was set up at Bishop Museum. So we think of Bishop Museum, the original building is still there. That used to be Kamehameha Schools. Years later, they moved up the hill over here at Kapa'alama. The girls' schools originally used to be located across the street from Farrington High School at Camphor Housing. Later on, the schools moved on campus. And then years later, decades later, they became a co-ed school back in the 1960s. So the school has gone through lots and lots of changes, a lot of transitions over the years. And it's still evolving. Like Hawaiian people, like our culture and our language, we are evolving. Another thing I'd like to point out is Kamehameha Schools is mentioned in the 2022 Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative Investigative Report. I'll give you a chance to read this slide. Kamehameha Schools, along with Hilo Boarding Schools and others, were identified as basically boarding schools, and the objective was to assimilate Native Hawaiians. The difference with Native Hawaiian schools, such as Kamehameha Schools, and the counterpart over in the continent with the Native American schools, or we say residential schools, is that we didn't have graveyards and cemeteries and all that implies. Kamehameha schools was a voluntary school. People were not forced to attend. In fact, when the schools opened, they had a hard time getting students to, to join, convincing families to enroll their children at the schools. It's not until the last few, maybe a couple decades of school now, it's fiercely competitive to get into school here at Kamehameha Schools. And it's changed so much over the years. Like I mentioned, it was established in 1887. The picture in the upper right-hand corner depicts the ROTC program or ROTC program at Kamehameha Schools. And you can still see the original school building behind it. It's still there at Bishop Museum. The ROTC program existed from 1888 to 2002. So let that sink in. Every male in the high school was enrolled in ROTC. It was trained. It was a program to train Native Hawaiian men to serve in the military. And I bring this up because it is no longer required. And the main reason why ROTC program was discontinued is because of lots of the lawsuits that happened over the years. Kamehameha Schools has been challenged and continues to be challenged in the court for many reasons. One big reason is has to do with the admissions policy, which is still controversial. So to settle that, to protect the trust, to protect the school, to protect Hawaii's wishes, to support Native Hawaiians, the school is still taking the hard stance that Native Hawaiian children have first priority. Once again, this is a will that was created before the state of Hawaii. So in order to protect that part of the will, Kamehameha schools decided to cut off all federally funded programs. 
So that way they can operate like a private school, operate independently. But it's still being challenged, yeah? Up until, like I said, 2002, males were all enrolled in the ROTC program. I remember in the 80s when I was a student there, high school boys had to enroll for two years. That was part of the curriculum. And the boys wore their uniforms once a week to school. A lot of boys really did not like it. My brother, for one, he graduated in 1992. And I'm bringing this up because Native Hawaiians in general have kind of an uneasy, complicated relationship with the U.S. military. On the one hand, Kukia Imauna people, Mauna protectors, Ainan water protectors, have a very strong stance against the U.S. military. At the same time, our own family members serve in the military. So it's a very complicated situation. And it was explained to me by a former general in the U.S. Army by the name of Suzanne Farris Lum, that many Native Hawaiians went into the military to serve. So Native Hawaiians still have that strong sense to serve as well as, as, well as have that warrior spirit to protect. So once again, that's a little bit of going into Native Hawaiians' complicated relationship with the U.S. military. Now I'm going to switch over to the girls. The girls' education was about being domestic goddesses. Women were trained to cook and clean. The males, in addition to serving in the military, they're trained to do manual service, farming, work, and so it has changed tremendously as the year has gone by. And we're also co-ed. Now, in the present situation, this is our mission. Our mission is to hanai ke keiki o la kalahui. We nurture the child and the lahui rises. So this spoke, if you will, contains several pieces that drives what we do as a school, as a librarian, as well as a teacher. Our goal is so all, all our graduates, when they leave the school, they'll be confident and empathetic. They'll be culturally and spiritually grounded. They'll be globally minded servant leaders like our Ali'i, Kawi Keo'oli, and many after him, David Kalakawa. They were trying to protect the sovereignty and independence of the Hawaiian nation at the same time knowing that it is important that we are part of the world. We have to interact with the world. So we cannot just be insular. Very delicate balance to achieve. Also, another goal we have is to advance the health of our Lahui. And we are stewards of our Aina culture and language. And that's the one I want to particularly focus on for this project, Laku Okoa. We also encourage our students to be self-advocates, passionate lifelong learners, and also academically prepared. So our students can compete not only in the classroom here, but as well as the continent and any place else. In the present time, Native Hawaiians are fiercely competitive. We're competitive in the classroom. We're competitive in the volleyball courts. By the way, the girls won. Fabulous. We're competitive even in the fields. And we're competitive on the stage as dancers. So like our ancestors, we're fiercely competitive. We are we are prideful. We are prideful. Also, I want to point out there are three K through 12 campuses. This is just something to point out. I, I didn't know not everybody knew this. So I work here at the Kapa'alama campus. We're above Kamehameha Shopping Centers over in Honolulu. We have 7,000 learners. And in the high school alone, we have over 1,600 learners. So as a school librarian, I have to keep in mind when we create programs is to address 1,600 learners and over 200 faculty and staff. That's almost 2,000 folks. And that's not even including the administrators too. So we think big because why? Native Hawaiians are extra. We extra. We're so extra. We have two other campuses too. We have one in Pukalani, Maui, where there are 1,100 learners and another one on Hawaii Island over at Keao, where there are 1,100 little over 1,100 learners. And this is another example how has the school had to adjust to the demands of our Native Hawaiian communities because we're saying, hey, you got to open up more schools. We have Hawaiians all over the place. You got to meet the needs of Hawaiians. So that's why they opened up in other campuses. Now, this is another example of how the trustees deviated from the will. 
because the will really is a compass. But we've had to adjust as the years go by to adjust to the needs of our community. And so now I'm going to share with you Midkiff Learning Center. This is where I work, up on the hill. Midkiff Learning Center is one of the few buildings that has a non-Hawaiian name. Most of our buildings, almost all, are named after Ali'is and other leaders. So Midkiff is one of the few, like Smith Office too. So it is at this learning center where I work with amazing and smart, smart, brilliant people. And let me share with you. We're just going to carry on. Oops, color mine. There we go. And so back in 2021, we had a new supervisor, Shari Chan. She came out of the English classroom to be our intern supervisor. And she also has a library science degree. And she posed a question, hey, let's, let's see about creating a laku of co activity. And like I mentioned earlier in the program, I didn't even know what that was. So I had to learn too. And she goes, how about we do this Hai Hawaii activity? And the question she asked is, what does our beloved Hai Hawaii mean to you, mean to us? And so this is a picture of Hai Hawaii. Many of you folks have seen this. There's a long history. Hai Hawaii isn't just the state of Hawaii flag. This Hai Hawaii is over 200 years old. So I have to share. It's nothing new. Sometimes people ask me, what's up with the green, red, and yellow flag? Because some people say, isn't that the Hawaiian flag? And I tell people, well... That's kind of like the Jawaiian flag, you know what I'm saying? So not to be confused, but this is the High Hawaii flag. This is the kingdom's flag. There have been other variations over the years, but this is the one that we recognize for Laku Okoa. And you know, when you get a bunch of Native Hawaiians together, not only we have beautiful people, we have wonderful food, food great music, we get our flags. We love our flags. And so let me share with you the lessons learned. Ooh, where'd it go? But that's okay. This is a picture of my homeroom back in 2021. And what we did is we created and we printed out these flags, the Hai Hawaii on cardstock, and we distributed them to each homeroom teacher, which is over about 200 teachers. And we the instructions we included was, have your students write on the flag, what does Hai Hawaii mean to you? And they wrote on it. And so this was the first activity we've done through homeroom. We thought by reaching through the homeroom, we can have much more access, much more impact that way. And so let me move on. Oh, there it is. Oh, sorry, I was getting fancy. So fancy, I forgot I animated this. So what we found out is that we had kind of okay participation. We knew we could be better. And we found out that a lot of people were unaware and apathetic about our high Hawaii. I know a lot of us are like, what? What do you mean you don't know about it? What do you mean you don't care? So that made, made us go, okay, that means we really got to pump out the educational part because our own people, our own students here, and on top of that, we got to educate our faculty members. Don't know. Also, some individuals did not want to write on the flag. They felt that they would be desecrating it. So that's something we did not anticipate. So I thought, oh, okay, we, we all learning. We all learning. And again, we have to increase our public awareness. And we knew we need to create more engaging and meaningful activities. So it's not enough to stick assignments in the homeroom teacher's boxes and say, go for it, pump this out. It's not enough. We need to do more to support our teachers. And this is an example of a flag. And you know, it's so cute. Several of our teachers still have the flags hanging on the doors. And this is from 2021. Through wind, rain, or shine, many of these flags are still on the doors. I think that's super cool. So I give you a chance to look at it, kind of small. I'll read to you a few common students wrote on it, what the flag means to them. It says, it reminds us of our history, genealogy, who we were as a people and what the people before us have been through. Another written word says, symbols independence to me. So it represents independence. Another writing says from a student, now mind you, this is all students writing, high school students writing. It's a symbol of strength and pride and all of everything Hawaii has gone through and faced. So really great stuff from the mouth of babes from my students. So we thought, you know what, we can do more. So when we rolled around getting ready for 2022, 
another colleague stepped forward by the name of Leah Kihara. She's a digital media specialist. And she says, you know what? Let's do an Aloha Aina project. Let's do that. And the question was, how do you practice Aloha Aina? And so we're like, okay, what is Aloha Aina? Most people think, you know, they, they Google it, they get the dictionary translation, love of one's lands or country, but it's even deeper. It's patriotism. So I went digging around and I pulled up this one famous article. So now we're getting smart now. Now we're using primary sources because I started asking, hey, how did our kupuna celebrate La Kuokoa? I mean, it's been around, right, since 1843. Why are we recreating the wheel in 2022? Let's see how they celebrate it. And so one amazing scholar and me'e, as we say, champion for our people by the name of Navahi o Kalani o Pu'u wrote in Ke Aloha Aina on the 25th of May in 1895, he wrote Ke Aloha Aina Hiahala. What is Aloha Aina? And he says, O Ke Aloha Aina, o ye ka ume maganeti i loko ka pu'u wai o ka lahui, e ka ohi ana i ka noho ku o koa lana ki lana. And there's more to the article, but I just include the first part, the very first part. And our kupuna from 1895 said, Aloha Aina, it is this magnetic force that we feel inside of the heart for our lahui, our people, that is beating. And it still exists, the victory of being independent in our own homeland. That's pretty heavy. So our kupunas have set the bar very high for us. So kind of scary for us now in the contemporary times that we have to live up to them. And so Leah continues sharing her idea about Aloha Aina. She says, hey, I read this article about quilts from the 19th and early 20th century. These are anti-annexation quilts. So we lost our sovereignty back in 93 with the help of the United States military. They took over our kingdom, our government. And so as a way to protest, not just a takeover, but also protest annexation, our people, Native Hawaiians, were fiercely against annexation. They did not want to be annexed to the United States. So one way to show their protest is to the creation of these quilts. So inside the quilts contain symbols that represent our patriotism, nationalism, it's a flag, and there we go, a flag. You notice the flag doesn't have stars on it. It has the Union Jack. That's because our Ali'i, back in the Kamehameha days, was trading with Great Britain. We had a very close relationship with Great Britain before the Americans. And I always say it's because royals relate to other royals. We had our own royal folks here, Ali'i. And so they... They understood each other. They created and cultivated relationships with one another. That's why we had a very strong connection with Great Britain. And also you see the crown there in the middle. That represents our ali'i in the modern day sense, if you will. An example of a quilt we see over to the left is held by this lovely couple. Lots of symbols in there. So that's why when you see Hawaiians get together, you always see us with flags. Sometimes you just see folks just walking down the street with a flag on their shorts flag on a shirt, or, you know, the lifted trucks with the flag. That's why we have great pride in our nation and our people. And so we thought, okay, how do we do this assignment for homeroom again? We back to homeroom activities. So I suggested or strongly urge my colleagues. I say, you know, if we're expecting our colleagues to do this in the homeroom, we have to do it ourselves. So we, before we rolled out the activity to our teachers, we created 11 by 11 inch papers, cardstock, blank paper, and we said, okay, we have to depict what does Aloha Aina mean to us. These are four examples. So out of a group of, say, eight folks that I work with total in this library, not everyone turned in their quilt pieces, if you will. And so that was an indication to us. If our own team didn't turn them in, we're going to expect the same from the rest of the high school. And so this acted as a beta test. Before we roll it out to nearly 200 homerooms, we had to do it ourselves. And it was challenging, but as you can see, it was fun. And you can see the variations. Some folks are really fancy. They, they use the computer, they use Adobe. Others like me, mine is the one in the lower left-hand corner. I was trying to combine Kukia Imauna, 
the Mount of Symbols, as well as our water, because Red Hill was happening at that time. Also, we, we invited guest speakers. You know, we got these ideas, really, from the newspapers. Our kupunas did the same thing. They had guest speakers that went up and they talked about the importance of our, our aina, importance of our, our nation. We also created lib guides. You know, teachers love lib guides. And we always like to share resources so we can point to our teachers. This is where you can go to learn more about la kuokoa. And we're very intentional about creating much more engaging student activities. And we like, okay, we got to make this student-centered posters. So again, we use the newspapers. This is one example. Our kupunas created songs, many, many songs. And we don't know what the songs sound like, but we have the text here. This is one example, La Kuokoa song. And so what many brilliant people do today is they look at the text and they create the medley and the song and they sing it. So it's really cool that we continue this tradition we reimagine the songs that a kupuna, a kupuna composed. A kupuna also had church services. Some of the new pepa showed the agendas, what was going on in church, the itinerary. They identify who were the guest speakers, what songs they sang. They held horse parties around the islands, and they had a lot of parties. I'm sorry, horse races and parties, and a lot, a lot of celebration. This example of our song comes from Hawaii Holomua from December 23rd, 1893. So this is a great way to engage with primary sources, our newspapers that our kupuna left for us. And so this is what we learned from 2022. We had a little bit better homeroom turnout. So these are three panels that you can see over here on this slide of the homeroom activities that students turned into us. And we put it together. So the idea is they create their image on this 11 by 11 paper, and we put it together like a collage, which was reimagined from the quilt examples from our kupuna. And so what we learned is we really got to have more public awareness. And also we got to reach out to teachers. So before the deadlines and after the deadlines, we still noticed, hey, we, we're still missing a lot of homeroom pieces. So I went door to door, especially with the social studies teacher, because that's my peeps, talk story with them. And I would say, hey, how are you doing on the homeroom activity? And what surprised me is several of them were really embarrassed. They're like, oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know where it is. I mean, seriously, they're like, I, I put it down and I put papers on it and I can't find it. And they were so embarrassed. And I said, no, be shame. I'm not here to judge. I, I'm not here to assess or evaluate you. I'm here to support. What do you need? Do you need another piece of paper? Do you need other tips? And so that's what I found was interesting is that we got to work with and cultivate relationships because we can't just expect teachers to do it. We don't want to make more work for teachers. As a teacher, we get enough work. So we got to help our teachers be successful by doing the heavy lifting for them and guide them. So not only is this a homeroom student activity, this is also for teachers too. And so here we go again, 2023, Hanaho. So Leah Kihara, our brilliant digital media teacher said, okay, let's do Mele Aloha Aina album covers. We're like, okay, album covers. So... Long story short, we created a playlist of 10 Mele Aloha Aina. These are songs that depict great pride and love for our land. Students within the home was to select one song, create an image that depicts the song. And this is a hard sell with my committee. I got to say with my group, because I was very fiercely supportive of Hawaiian language lyrics. I said, they have to put the lyrics on the paper. And my colleagues were, whoa, 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 that's too much. I said, why? Without... Hawaiian words, without the lyrics, you don't have a mele because there's mana in our words. So one of my colleagues, God bless her, Laakea Cumberlander, the general collection librarian, said, how about just two lines instead of the entire lyrics? And I said, okay. That's when I sat down. I thought, you know what, Ku'u, you have to compromise. You got to negotiate. Let's do this. And so I had to learn that too because I am a very stubborn person. I like to get things done my way. So I had to learn... Put the pride on the side, put the ego on the side, and to work with the best of the group. And so I did that. This is one example. So before we rolled it out to our homeroom students, our homeroom activities, right, the teachers, I work with several of my own library service students. I have four students, and I rolled out the activity with them. And I say, each of you individually will choose your song, select two lines from the song, 
and depict it. And put your names on the bottom because I thought it's important for them to take credit for their work. So this is one example. Also, Kavika Mahelona, our graphic artist, created our logo. So now he's setting the bar even higher. We're going to have logo every year for a Laku Okoi event. So we made this a contest. So the home rooms were competing for pizza lunch. So that's another thing we learned. Got to gamify to get people engaged. Bring in the challenge. Food, stickers, all kinds of stuff. So what did we learn to mobilize our people? Gamification. Also, we engaged our Pukamai Kalao High School News. Earlier in this presentation, you saw our students present about La Kuokua. We had other news create, other new uh, public service announcements made by our students today. And it's very important to have them student made. Very, very important because that way they're engaged and they get to share with their, their own peers. And I always tell people, Students don't want me to get up in front of the camera and talk about La Kuoko and how cool it is. They'd rather see a six feet four football player or a cute, pretty girl up in the front of that camera explaining La Kuoko than me. I know how to engage. I'd rather promote, put students in the front. I'm in the back setting it up, okay? Another thing we did, like I said, we printed t-shirts. So I'll share with you what it looks like because. Kavika Mahelona, our graphic artist extraordinaire, created our logo, and we took it the next step when we printed the shirts with student help. And we had guest speakers, and I know there's and, right? We keep adding on. There's more. Oh, shuckies, that's my timer. But I'm going to continue because I'll talk about the activities in a few more slides. So this is one example. We knew we had to utilize IG. I don't have IG. I know cool people have. I don't have. So... I work with students. I say, hey, this is what we need to do. I hope you create. I'll give you the information what we need. You need to get this out to your friends. Get this out. This is an advertisement for T-shirt drop-off. And we have them out in two languages, English and Hawaiian language. Students were encouraged to bring their shirts and we'll print them. We had the vitals in here. We had an amazing concert that day. Just this past Tuesday, I was up on the second floor taking pictures. It was amazing. Kids were in here. There, it was like lines out in the front. And we didn't have food inside because it's a library, but they're here to hear the vitals. We chose the Vitals 808 because they're an, an, a, a hot up-and-coming band, and the message that they share is aligned with Aloha Aina. Once again, we were very clear about our message. It's about Aloha Aina. And see, we knew like our kupuna did, we got to celebrate La Kuokoa. So we opened the doors and we brought our students in. Actually, we're supposed to have this activity out in the field, but because of the rain, we brought them in. We made it work. It was good fun. And this is another activity we did on the right side. Students hand-painted or hand-printed the flag over there. And on the left side is to show a little bit of our exhibition we created in the library using student work and other items to promote our activity. So this is what we learned. You gotta be very clear about your message. We knew first and foremost, we wanna celebrate our independence, la kuokoa. What did it mean back then? And what does it mean to us today? And we made sure we intentionally met regularly. We kept fastidious notes and we created goals. We had spreadsheets for days, Google docs, and we held each other accountable. And we also have to cultivate relationships with school officials because they hold the budget. They hold the money and the connections. We had to learn how to work with a lot of other people and team up. So it wasn't about competing. It was about teaming up and engaging with others to lift up our community. And we had to follow up with everyone and tread carefully. Not everybody was happy about this. Not everybody supported this. There's some jealous people, but we had to just leave that alone and move forward. Almost done. So the view that I have and I share with my, my colleagues is we want to engage more students. We have three campuses really on this one Kapalama campus. We have high school, middle school, and elementary school. What I see in the future is we connect all three schools so we celebrate together. That's a big goal. And important is that we collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. This is a picture of my colleagues on the bottom. I got to give props to them. They're amazing. I wasn't in this picture because I had to dash back to get to UH, to um, Kapapalo Iokanewai. 
So I was going back and forth between New Age and our very own activity. And so I got to give props to my colleagues. They're amazing. They're super smart. So they're wearing the shirt that we printed. We printed over 200 shirts two Wednesdays ago. In the back is the Vitals 808. Super cool band. So I got to share. We rocked it in Midkiff Learning Center. So the, the goal is you got to celebrate. You got to speak up. You got to create preserve and teach. So this is a picture I took standing behind the band with the students in the front. I thought this really captures the spirit of La Kuokoa. We celebrate our independence, celebrate all that we were and what we potentially can become. Oye vale no. And that is it. I'm going to stop sharing.